Um, they do a convention every year, and this year, like, two and a half thousand Marillion fans turned up, and I was invited to play to them. It is a bit daunting getting up in front of two and a half thousand of somebody else's fans, and the Marillion fans particularly are they're quite discerning. I mean, they really do love their music and um, really admire their musicians. And so I knew that I'd have to do, you know, something pretty impressive to sort of, like, get through to them. And one of the things I chose to do was um, show them this. This is my ambidextrous guitar. This guitar was made for me by a guitar maker in Manchester, Johnny Smith. And you might think it's, in fact, two guitars, uh, but in fact it is one. It's got the same serial number on the left hand neck and the right hand neck. Now, I thought the Marillion lot might actually quite like this because they probably hadn't seen one before. And um, they might enjoy actually watching a guitarist, you know, play both left-handed and right-handed at the same time. And um, this is actual footage from the Marillion show, and um, they really did appreciate it. <laughs> As this program isn't entertainment, it's educational. I thought we could do this. When I was young and used to go and watch bands myself, I never used to like the good ones because I always found that a bit depressing because I knew I'd find that difficult. I actually used to enjoy and find far more inspiration in seeing the ones that were pretty rubbish because I used to get very excited and thought, well, I can do better than that. And so I thought it was only fair for me to be a bit inspirational, okay? Now this is a video I did that is not up to the standard of what you've been seeing so far. If you've been a bit put off because, you know, because of the standard of what you've seen so far, um, I thought I'd put this in. I find this highly embarrassing. I find it very difficult to watch. What happened was I'd released Delilah as a single and I wanted a video to go with it. And I thought, ah, now here's an opportunity for me to change my image. You know, people had always, you know, thought of what I did was, um, you know, more, more comedy than the music a lot of the time. And I thought, no, here's an opportunity to have a proper record and be a proper pop star and be, you know, a bit more of um, a hungry sexual animal on, um, on telly. So we did Delilah. It's coming up in a minute. And um, I ran around and got myself all hot and sweaty, and I made this wall to myself when I did the video. Don't smile. Just think. Hungry, sexual, animal. And, um, it doesn't work. I'm not going to watch it, but if you want inspiration, I suggest you do. I saw the light on the night that I stood by her window. Saw the flickering shadows of love on the blind. She was my woman. As she deceived me, I watched and went out of my mind. My, my, my Delilah. I cross the street to her house and she opens the door. She burst laughing. I felt the knife in my hand. She laughed. 
back no more. My, 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 Delilah. That was very, very, very kind of me, wasn't it? I could have filled this whole series with all my best stuff and things, and I thought, no, no, it's important for the next generation to realise that people, you know, like me, they've had a couple of hits, can also do some pretty naff stuff, given an opportunity, and if they think of an idea that's bad enough. The reason we thought Delilah was going to be a big hit record was the fact that Weetabix used it for their TV advertising campaign. And it was a very successful uh, TV advertising ca campaign. Sales of Weetabix actually rose by um, 2 or 3%. And that actually am amounted to, you know, 2 or 3 million extra Weetabix. And we thought, well, you know, if they're going to buy the Weetabix, they're obviously going to buy the record and we'll have a big hit. But it doesn't actually work like that. And to understand why it doesn't work like that, we need to look at the statistics. Okay, we have a couple of graphs here. Sales of breakfast cereal, um, pretty steady, around about sort of 17 million. And here's the percentage rise, taking it up to 20 million. Difference, 3 million um, items of breakfast cereal. Now here's the graph for the record sales. A similar thing, pretty static sales for three months and a 3% rise. The difference is, on the left here, you see but it's actually gone from about 32 records a month to 40 records a month. An extra seven records, you see, from 30, um, 32 to 40, around about sort of seven extra records a month, which doesn't produce the big hit. A quick word about clothing if you're a, a, a rock and roller. These shoes, not the best shoes to go on stage with, because if your shoelace happens to come undone, it's very, very difficult to actually look cool and tie your shoelace at the same time. I mean, you don't see um, Cliff Richards or Paul McCartney or Mick Jagger doing it. You might see some of the newer bands that haven't learned yet, but the, the professionals don't do it. And if you're a guitarist, I mean, it looks even worse. back to the Delilah video you saw earlier. Right, same session. The video producer says, you know, we're here, why don't you do a video for the B-side? And I thought, well, all right, but, you know, it wasn't as important to me as the A-side, so I didn't think about doing Hungry Sexual Animal at all. I just got up, had a bit of a laugh, had a bit of a laugh with the band, and I actually quite liked this.
quick tip. If you've got a girl in your band, just make sure that they're aware that Sisters Are Doing It For Themselves was actually co-written by Dave Stewart. Thanks for watching.